man, what a day to go for a cruise in a Tornado. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Yeah. Both these cars that we're driving today, just smooth, torquey, quiet. Personal luxury. Personal luxury cars. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to My Classic Car. Well, this week I'm down in Ocala, Florida to visit my good friend Rick Schmidt and check out a few more cars in the amazing NPD collection. Rick and his dad have amassed an incredible array of cars, mostly specializing in low mileage, unrestored original cars. And we brought out a couple of my personal faves today, the 66 Tornado and a 67 Riv. These things have got such unbelievable low miles, 1,200 miles, I'm not kidding, 10,000 miles. It's gonna be awesome. Wait till you see these things. Hey, Rick. How you doing, Dennis? I'm doing great. I'm back down <laughs> here. We're looking at some of your great cars again. Yeah. These two monsters that we brought out today are just so great. The, the 67 Riv and the 66 Tornado. These are two really fabulous yeah. GM cars. High style, styling on steroids, personal luxury <laughs> cars. Yes. Absolutely. And this car, you've had this in the collection for a while. This mm -hmm. is one that I have wanted to do for so long because it's just so perfect. This car is ultra low miles. What is this? It's got a little bit over 1,200 original 1200 miles on it. Original miles. Still on its original tires, paint, upholstery, hose clamps, hoses, everything. Untouched. Everything's untouched on this car. This has got to be the best color they ever came in. This is called Tropic Turquoise, and yeah, I can't imagine a better color for Toronado. And luckily, it's got the deluxe interior in the matching turquoise. So uh, the car is just, it's got the most eyeball of any Toronado I think I've ever laid eyes on. This is just a very exotic styling. This was like a concept car available to the public. These things even look, I mean, you could sharpen those things up. They yeah. look dangerous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, pontoons. What, what a. What a wild, you know, wild style. But yeah, I'll tell you, they're getting hard to find. They're getting really hard to find, and I think they're really starting to catch traction with uh, collectors as well. Luckily, I bought this before much of anybody cared. I bought it literally months before Jay Leno came out with his <laughs> hot rodded one, and that sparked a little bit that of a fire. That did sort of change things. Now all of a sudden, Coronados <laughs> were cool. They weren't just cheap used cars. You're riding on the original tires. The original too. tires, and, and this is one of the earliest uh, times that I'm aware of where the manufacturer cooperated with a tire manufacturer to come up with a unique design tire for the car. This is a Uniroyal Laredo T slash FD, which stands for Toronado Front Drive. Front Drive. I'll bet nobody's remaking those tires. No, no, uh, those tires are rare as hen's teeth. I'd have to crawl into an awful lot of Toronado trunks in uh, junkyards to try <laughs> to come up with another else. set, right. <laughs> but this interior, and the match, the color match on it is spectacular. Yeah, the color match is perfect. Oh. It's a mix of vinyl and, and, and uh, a fabric, right? And fabric, and it's just a dynamite. You know, the whole entire concept car theme carries from the outside all the way in as well. And it's cool that you've got that flat. It's a front wheel drive car, oh, so it is a flat floor, isn't no it? No transmission. Yeah. Uh, uh, the drive shaft uh, mm -hmm. hump and everything. Right, yeah. right. This also has, at least on the driver's side, the integrated uh, floor mat, like right. the Starfires have. Yeah, that's built into the carpet with a with a you know, bright trim around it. It's got uh, front and rear uh, door release uh, oh, that, handles, so your rear here. passengers can let themselves out of the out of the door <laughs> without having to lean over the seat. This rear end was like nothing else that no. was happening back then either. It's almost a little Daytona coupe. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you, you, you're flat. Yeah, yeah. It's a dynamite looking car. You know, I, uh, it's been uh, long past due for these to really go up and, and be super collectible. I mean, it comes with the high compression 385 horse 425 engine. So you've got performance, you've got ex exclusivity and, uh, and unbelievable styling all in one package. They're rare today. Well, well so the uh, 425, right? Yes. Let's go look at that. All right. Oh boy. That is, that is magnificent. That's brand new. Yeah, it's like a it's like a brand new engine compartment. I haven't done any touching up on that or at all. It's uh, it's really in wonderful shape. You know, it's front wheel drive, so the engine's sitting way far forward. More actually. forward than you, right? This is the same setup they put in the GMC motorhomes, isn't it? Yes, it is, and it's so over engineered, so over built. It was not only a sturdy and reliable setup for the uh, passenger car; these things tugged motorhomes around <laughs> reliably. So, uh, I mean, this isn't even dusty. <laughs> it's just. Uh, this is just crazy. I've never seen anything like it. It's just, it's magnificent. And she still runs great. Oh, it runs like a Swiss watch. So smooth, so quiet. You not even know it's running until you hit the gas. Let's take out for a ride. All let's, right, let's, let's do put it. a few more miles on this baby. <laughs>
Let's fire this baby up. Four twenty-five, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, this is a four twenty-five with yet another ten horsepower on top of the Starfire <laughs> engine. That's three hundred eighty-five horsepower. Just putting this car in gear is a joy. There's no wear in it. It's no. only been used a few times. There's no slop in it. <laughs> no yeah, slop yeah. at all. It's just like click, mm -hmm. click. That's the fun. Uh, that's really the rare experience you get from driving these really low mile cars is, man, it's brand new. It's, it's, it's fresh off the factory it line. It is brand new. And uh, you sense it and you feel it in the smoothness and the balance of the drivetrain and the quietness of it and how everything's just so tight and not worn out. So you get to drive it that frequently? No, but the times that you do drive a car oh, like wow. this is a real, real special experience. You chased this car for a while, didn't you? Yeah, I want to say it was one and a half to two years. The car was sold new in Buffalo, mm -hmm. but it wound up with a fellow in the uh, Tampa St. Petersburg area. And my dad remembers seeing this car for sale in the early or mid 80s. Really? In Hemmings Motor News. Dad remembers because the, the low miles and the absurd price. <laughs> I went to the mat more for this car than just about anything else in the collection. Well, it was playing hard to get, for sure. Yes, right to the very end. If even, even getting it into the trailer was, uh, I lost five <laughs> pounds of sweat equity. Well, this was about as outlandish a design in 66 as there was. Yeah, it really was. And that's why these cars appealed to me ever since I can remember. <laughs> you know, I wasn't born until 1967, but there was still plenty of Toronados of this generation on the road when I was a young kid, and they just looked like spaceships to me. I just they thought it was do. the coolest thing on the road. And, and you know, and, and along those lines, Oldsmobile always had these great steering wheels yeah. that were like reminiscent of an airplane yoke. Yes. And, you know, that whole aeronautic... Everything uh, was rocket age, jet age. Yeah. With, uh, the, with Oldsmobile in some respect, you can always find design details like that. And the, the speedometer, the barrel speedometer, mm -hmm. I just love. I just remember these coming down the road in the mid-60s, late-60s, and you just stopped and you looked at them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's never been another car before or since. It looks anything like, no. uh, you know, a first-gen Toronado. You know, with the exception of the the original tires and their kind of squareness, I don't know if I've ever been in a smoother Oldsmobile than this. No, I mean, it's... It is like silk and quiet. Yeah, it has the kind of refinement that you come to expect from high-end luxury cars that are new today. Yeah, yeah. Boy, I like this. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. It's uh, <laughs> an amazing car. 66, first year Tornado with a mere 1,200 miles on it. The ribs a beautiful car too. A little bit higher mileage, you know. Slightly. Slightly, yeah. but uh, a little I, more broken in. A little more broken in. I say yeah. we break it in some more. Let's go back oh, and get the rib. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You're gonna love that car. Holy cow, I feel like I just drove something off the showroom floor with that Tornado. Yeah, well you did. <laughs> I did. You did. <laughs> right down to the tires. 12, yeah, exactly, yeah. 1,200 miles, unbelievable. Another fave though, only one year newer, the 67 Riv. Yes, this car is just flat out beautiful. From any angle that you look at it, uh, there's just not a line you would change. Yeah, there's, a, I, I wouldn't call it exotic, I would just call it just- Just beautiful. Total eye appeal. Eye it, it is, yeah. that's a complicated front end with a lot of pieces to it. Mm -hmm. Hideaway headlights that aren't quite as, it's just not as complicated as the, the 63, 4, 5. These what, they, they rotate down actually. Yeah, they rotate down. Yeah. What'd they call this color? It's called green mist metallic. And now, it works for me, I'm a green car guy, but this was a tough decision for your dad. You and your dad kind of I chased this car for a while or? I, I, I dig green, I, I, <laughs> I, I don't have a problem with green cars. My dad on the other hand, he had a problem with green cars because this car, we, we, there was a for sale sign for it hanging on a uh, swap meet space at Hershey for years. He kept walking past it and walking past it, 10,000 original miles, 67 Riviera, which is a real bucket list car for my dad. Yeah. He kept on saying, well, it's green. I, don't, I just don't want to <laughs> step, step up to that kind of money because it's green and I don't want a green one. 
But after about seven, eight years of realizing that he wasn't finding another one for sale that had this kind of <laughs> mileage, he decided to go look at and it. And get over it, right? And he got over it. I think it's a fantastic color, and, and it really does a good job at casting the shadows to where it shows off all the beautiful body lines on this car. This crease that runs down through here, and then of course the sharp mm -hmm. fenders, you know, the, the peak of the fenders, there are so many great lines. This is a leather interior in this car too? No, it's a vinyl interior. It is a vinyl interior? Yeah. But she's also a bench. It's a bench. 67, uh, they introduced the bench seat as standard and then the buckets with console was optional. Sure, I'd like to have the buckets with consoles, but uh, beggars can't be choosers. No, this I mean, is the way this car came. And 10,000 miles, you, you're going to be hard pressed to find You got to take like it the that. way it comes. <laughs> so uh, this one isn't quite as wild on the inside, but it's, but it's the same uh, that same barrel, the same speedometer. barrel speedometer, yeah. And I like those little the little square gauges. They're mm -hmm. small, but boy, they balance the dash nicely. Yeah, yeah. And again, sharp lines. Yeah, it's got just enough like chrome in all the right places on it. I think it's just a perfect styling exercise, and one of my, uh, you know. Easily one of my top five most beautiful cars Ever. that I think we have in our collection. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, in uh, 67, but but there you could see that the 71 boat tail is coming. It's almost, <laughs> I mean, can't you? It's kind of starting They're, they're culminating in that little point at the end, yeah. and, and shoot, they could have done a boat tail out of this that might have been a pretty attractive deal as well. I also love the, uh, the tail lights, the way they go all the way across, curve mm -hmm. out a little bit, just like in the front. Where she kind of flares out. You've got the same contour here. in the front as in the back. It's got perfect balance. What's the engine in this? This is a uh, 430, which was all new for 1967. It replaced Ooh. the 425 nail head. Oh, okay. And, uh, and it's a 430. It's rated at 360 horsepower. But man, is it just like a steam engine. It's just. <laughs> Let's go you, look at it. You'll love it. Oh, that's pretty. 430, four barrel. Yes. Wildcat power. Brand new, smooth, torquey, great, great engine. This is also a dual master cylinder, finally. There was a lot of safety upgrades for 1967. Uh, a dual circuit braking system, uh, collapsible steering column, the uh, shoulder restraints were uh, for new for 67. Uh huh. So this is now up to 11,000 miles or so, but this engine's never, you've never done anything to this? Never done anything to it. No, just changed the oil, made sure it was in, all in the correct tune and check the timing, but the, I mean, the valve covers have never been off this engine before. <laughs> Buicks were known in the 60s Absolutely. for performing a little stronger than advertised. Particularly in torque. Yes, particularly in torque, and you're about to find that this car really performs. It's fun to drive. It's a car that you could enjoy every single day. It handles. It's just, it's a whale of a car. That's why, that's why I joked to you that I could have more than one because, <laughs> and, and not mind it at all because, uh, because these were really well engineered. Well, I've never driven one, so let me Perfect. drive this one. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's, Let's go. do it. The ride and drive on this is sweet. Can you imagine test driving one of these in uh, 1967 and not walking out the door with it that day? You know, <laughs> oh, I don't like the way this uh, car drives. It's too smooth and powerful and <laughs> steers too easy. <laughs> yeah, we're not on original tires like we were the Toronado. This has got modern radials on it. Yeah, so. I'm less nervous. <laughs> so. and not only were they original tires, they were like ultra rare original tires right. on the Toronado. You don't feel disconnected from the road, but at the same time, you don't feel any imperfections. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's comfortable, but it's not floaty. No, no, not at all. It drives like a modern car, and you could drive this car every day, and I just never feel like I'm giving up anything when I'm driving this car around. I think these cars have got a great front end. These cars don't have a bad angle. The, the there six, isn't one. The 66 and 67 Riviera is one of the most perfect designs, in my opinion, from the 60s. Yet nobody ever talks about these yeah, as is. being that, you know, and uh, I true. don't necessarily get it because I, don't, <laughs> I, you know, I can't think of anything else that, uh, that really just has the eyeball that this car does. Yeah, it flows beautifully and mm -hmm. yet has real sharp lines, very crisp lines. Right where they need to be, yeah. yeah. What I did notice about this is it feels punchier. This is rated at 360 horsepower as opposed to the 385 horsepower in the Toronado. Huh. And you know how the horsepower ratings were back in those days. If you 
Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Right, so so it may it may be making every bit as much power as the uh, old mobile. So it pushes you right along. I don't recall what the torque ratings are, but, but yeah, this you just touch the gas and it just takes off. And, that's, and I think that's what I'm mm -hmm. almost feeling is, is yeah. the Buick torquiness. It's, uh, it feels more eager. What a really, really nice driving car this is. It really has the ride of a Buick. Yeah. Which is a very luxurious ride. So until our next meeting, remember, honor the timeless classics. I'm Dennis Gage. Happy motoring.